Hey everybody, happy Freaky Friday. Welcome back to the Podcast Daily. That is Bill Landis, Jeremy Birmingham, and I am Austin Ward, and it is Scrimmage Eve. Mm. Mm. Huge day. Drink it in. We get to come in and Put watch. Out milk and cookies? Yeah. I, so I'm putting something out, probably not milk and cookies, but maybe not as many as I would normally like on a Friday night because we're going to be in here and I've got to be on top of my game, That's Bill, right. so that we can take some notes. Well, i got to check what the weather is going to be. Oh, he's worried about the weather. It's an indoor practice. They're going to practice in here, bud. Uh, oh, he's worried about the weather. Oh, I don't like. I bet it'll be seventy uh, percent chance of rain. Whatever it is in here <laughs> right now is seventy percent no chance of rain. It's going to be humid in here. Means this field's going to be more slippery than normal. And there's your scrimmage preview from Brim Cantori for an indoor practice. <laughs> I'm still I'm tired of slipping. That's all. I, I don't like the slipping. Seventy percent chance of rain, folks. Just stay home and bring watch an umbrella. Us. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't bother coming out to the old ballpark. They're not, invited. To come in. They're not <laughs> invited. What are we doing here? We're off to a flying start. Uh oh, and there it is. He's got it piped in. It's dab time. Uh, <laughs> I don't know where to go from here. Josh Fryer is going to join us for an interview. Uh, stay tuned for that. He was a fantastic guest for Freaky Friday. I'm really excited to see what he can do. As I know that Bill will be watching the offensive line yeah. uh, in that matchup on Saturday, um, what, 10 30 in the morning. Yeah, um, and maybe maybe more so the guys on the right side than, than Josh Fry. I'll be watching them all. Be, my focus will be trained on those guys <laughs> and the quarterbacks. Most, Locked most in. Likely. Yeah, but um, the, I think I mentioned this maybe earlier in the week, or maybe it was at Roosters, where like Zen Wachowski last year, I thought like when we got to watch him a little bit in practice, like what people were saying and what I saw didn't exactly match up because he was having a little trouble with the speed of some of those guys at the defensive end position last year. Um, so I want to see how he handles that this year. It does seem like from the conversations we had on Thursday that – um, he is uh, 1A is probably the right way to put it with, with Tegra Shabola being 1B. I want to see both those guys at, at right tackle and see how they handle the, the power of JT, the, the, the speed and power of, of Jack, the, the length of a guy like Kenyatta Jackson. Um, it, that, that is the one interesting thing about the defensive ends here. There's a lot of different styles, a lot of different body types that, that I think you can get a pretty good feel for how these tackles are progressing by watching them in a the scrimmage setting. Word. Word. Uh, I mentioned on Thursday's uh, snap judgments, like uh, I'm really interested to see the gap between what we would expect to be the backup offensive lineman versus the true freshman offensive lineman, because I, I think that when you're really starting to like project ahead for summer and fall, I think there's an opportunity for Luke Montgomery and Austin Saraveld and, and even Josh Padilla, who's probably a little bit further behind developmentally um, just because he was a little bit smaller coming out of high school. Um, I, I think those guys are in a position to really make some some moves. And so I don't know how they're going to do the scrimmage. We don't really understand. We don't know yeah. much about like the alignment of the scrimmage or if they're going to go offense for defense. To, to I mean, if they're going to go one versus three, three versus one, like, who knows. But um, I think that it's a big day for, for those guys just to make sure that they feel like they can do this in front of people and, and with some, you know, some scrutiny. I would think if you're – if your whole mindset of this spring is that you want more win or loser opportunities, which is one thing that Ryan Day mentioned on Tuesday, and the second thing was game-like situations that we heard even before spring camp started, then I don't think you can go ones versus threes and be like, well, we feel really good and we can execute this stuff. Like, you're not playing a game this week. If they don't go Wait, one I versus one. I thought scrimmage was super important. I'm saying, it should, I'm saying settings. you should make it more important. It does count <laughs> for something because some people are going to get to eat steak and – Oh, that's the spring game. Uh, <laughs> you should make it important. Okay. One I, I versus agree. ones I versus ones. Word. I don't think that there's value in like mixing it up in the spring game setting and like scramble the roster. I don't think they would do that because in this scrimmage, like you're trying to get better and you're trying to push yourself. The spring game is like a celebration and you're yeah. you're done. Like if they don't go a lot of one on one versus one, I would be very surprised. I think there'll be much more good on good Saturday and on April 1st, right? It's during the appreciation day than there will be on this in the spring game. Yeah. Because the spring, like half the spring game, they don't even tackle. Um, I think they will tackle. The season, they didn't tackle last year. So <laughs> that's Ooh, hey, worked out great. But I'm I think uh, I think they will tackle. Ryan Day said they want to tackle on, on Saturday. Maybe maybe they pull it back a little bit on the student appreciation day because there's going to be a million people in here. Mm -hmm. um, but I guess there'll be a lot of people in here on Saturday too. But they won't be students encircling <laughs> the field like there are uh, on that day. So yeah, I think you're, I think you're right. And I I would be shocked if it's not a lot of ones versus ones, good on good. Now like. Is JT doing well about going to play 40 snaps in a scrimmage on Saturday? Probably not. But um, the whoever, in a world where you're trying to save guys reps, whoever makes up the ones, I think you'll see 1v1. Yeah. 
I agree. Um, <laughs> are we talking about who else we're wanting to see? What we're wanting to see? Yeah, yeah. Looking forward of course. To? Uh-huh. I mean, you what know, kind me. of nachos are going to eat? I'm, I'm not going to eat nachos because we're chose. in Woody Hayes. There's no chose happening apparently. Uh-huh. Uh, I am very interested to see the young receivers uh, step up and, and get their opportunity to get some run. Um, and to see just the chemistry that builds between De- Devin Brown and Kyle McCord and these receivers. I think that without Julian Fleming, without Emeka Buka, likely to see only a little bit of Marvin Harrison in that situation, especially if they're hitting, you're not going to risk anything. I'm, I'm going to say right now, I will lobby. Let's, let's see none. Let's see no Marvin Harrison. No, no, Marvin, Marvin, Harrison. no Marvin Harrison. Very little Xavier Johnson. Um, it is a big opportunity for these guys to, to step up and see how it feels to go as hard as you can against top flight Big Ten type cornerbacks. Um, like Denzel Burke and, and Jordan Hancock. And I'm really interested in seeing Davis and Igman yeah, too. get his hands on some people. I also think it's good because Brandon Innes is in town and he's going to be here and being able to kind of soak in this atmosphere as well. And when you're talking about really down the road, how he's going to be able to fit in and acclimate himself in June, um, I think that's a big help for him to get to see this type of atmosphere. How did it become the official position of the podcast to advocate not for teams receivers to practice? I just I spent just, all just, of last training camp, Berm saying that Jackson Smith and Jigba was, was right. unfair. He was right. <laughs> See? Well, Jeez, Jackson shouldn't have played until October. It would See? have maybe his hamstring needed practice. Maybe you need your body to be I prepared to play football. Maybe. maybe Marvin Harrison does need to practice. He'll to be get better. He'll do I stuff. get a sneaking suspicion if they held Marvin Harrison out of the practice and scrimmage on Saturday that we could come back in here five hours later and we would find Marvin Harrison practicing. So I think if Marvin didn't practice from now until the opener against Indiana, he'll still have three touchdowns against Indiana. I think if he was being held out of practice on Saturday, he would take somebody else's jersey, put it on, and go practice. Like, oh, yeah, Caleb Brown looks bigger. <laughs> and he'd get one rep, and then they'd be like, hey, <laughs> we'll get that guy out of here. He's too good. One rep too many. Is there a... Uh, a young receiver that you're most excited to watch? I I, I really want to see how Noah Rogers fares. Yeah, I just me too. I, I have a very high opinion of him as far as what he's going to develop into. Um, and so physically, I think that's the big change coming from North Carolina. I, he was a, played against good competition in high school, but it's different when you're getting out there and you've got a guy like Egbin Oson who's going to have his hands on you or, or Jordan Hancock. Uh, so I, I'm interested to see how he out here looks. I know with Carnell Tate, like speed wise, I know they're going to be good. Uh, with both those guys, but I, I just want to see the mindset of them and how they work, how they are when they're not on the field, if they're dialed in or if they're talking to Marv, if they're, mm-hmm. you know, because Marvin has a role and so does Mecca and Julian and Xavier. Like they have a role with these guys on Saturdays. It's probably bigger than they would have if they played. So um, in the scrimmage. So that, I think I, I'm excited to see all of them, um, but Noah Rogers is the one where I'm, most like, ooh, I, I think that there's just really going to be something special with him. Yeah, probably Caleb Brown because I think that he's the closest of the second year guys to finding a role. Right? And I still don't know what that would look like for him with uh, what you have at the top of that depth chart. That's uh, he's got an intriguing set of skills and athleticism that I think can help Ohio State. Now, it's not necessarily something that they must have. I think they're in good shape when they're fully healthy and ready to go in the season. But we spent you know, the the better part of last season at the end, talking about, well, can somebody push in case something happens? And then lo and behold, something did in the Peach Bowl and they needed more help there and they, they didn't have it. So somebody of that group is going to have to emerge a little bit to s- supply depth and get to, you know, five, six in the rotation to help out down the road. And I I just have a, a weird suspicion that out of those second year guys that Caleb Brown might be that guy. I think he could be. I'm I'm pretty eager to see uh, Jaden Ballard out here. He's not a he's not a young guy. I guess he's going into his third year, but we're talking about him after the pro day and just kind of how explosive he looks. Does that like translate to a practice setting? Is he uh, a reliable pass catcher? Is he the, the take the top off the kind of guy that we all think he can be? Um, sort of how they use him, I think, will be really for all these receivers how they use him will be interesting. Where they line up, the kind of routes they think they can run, or, or, or what's best for them now, I think will all be fun to monitor. But um, but so much opportunity available to guys who haven't played a ton at that position. I do. There's there's going to be an opening for one or two that we're going to be like afterwards like oh man watch out for this guy we, we were talking as a group about like projecting to next year's nfl pro day and how many guys ohio state could lose like 40 and it's, there's, it's a, lot, there's a, a huge number and i think everyone at times is guilty of talking too much about the the players and then talking too much about the freshmen and then the, those middle guys sort of get like oh well screw those guys they're, they're not gonna like this is a huge couple of weeks for all those guys and so it's hard to put too much of an emphasis on what makes it important um for them but certainly keon grays and 
Tojo Antwi and Caleb Brown and Caleb Burton, who I, I don't know if he'll play. We haven't had an update on his physical health, but there, there's so many things that these guys have to like do in order to hold off the, the guys coming at the offensive line at wide receiver that it, it's hard to put too much of an emphasis on how important these next couple of weeks are for them. Chris Henry Jr. just walked by. And when you think was? about yeah. a, a 2026, so that's a kid who's a freshman in high school. What? Yeah. yeah. He's like seven feet tall. Yeah, that, <laughs> how is he a freshman? You, when you talk about players who are like, wow, that you know there's diff- There's occasionally just dudes who are different. Chris Henry Jr. who just walked by is different. And then Justin Hill, who's a linebacker from Winton Woods who walked by. Does he, he want to hit that pad and start drill. Drill. <laughs> He's a 2025. He's a sophomore. And then he picked up some trash, which was nice. Oh, so, I mean, well, that's good. You know, wow. good, good character. But anyway, I just said, uh, wow. Chris Henry, are you just seeing me like, ah, Lee? Yeah, I compl- I, I'm stunned that that is a freshman in high school. I'll need a moment to regroup <laughs> while you listen to Josh Fryer get ready for the scrimmage and uh, talk about Disney, Pixar movies, and a whole lot more on a Freaky Friday interview. We'll be right back after that to talk about some quarterbacks. All right, taking a break here on a Freaky Friday edition of the podcast, and we have a special guest and a large one. <laughs> Josh Fryer. Hey, yeah. Josh, you spent all last year just kind of peeking in at those offensive line interviews. I, yeah. could, I could tell how badly you wanted to start doing this. <laughs> no, no. It, it's uh, it's cool to see uh, come full circle. Yeah. Honestly. You, I mean, did you want, you want to just be part of the media? You wanted to ask some questions? You want to make some jokes? Like, <laughs> Yeah, just make make some jokes, ask some interesting questions. I think uh, that's, the, that's the biggest uh, What's up, piece. What's up, Tyler? <laughs> What's the most interesting question that you have got now that you are in line to be a starting left tackle at Ohio State? I think the uh, biggest question I've got actually is uh, how's the transition from right to left, <laughs> which uh, I don't, I don't, uh, I think it's seamless for me because I've played right guard, center, left guard. Um, so I've been in those different stances and I feel like uh, it's, uh, it's well and it worked well for me. I would say that you seem almost like disinterested in that question. We talk about it a lot. Like, yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. It's, this is a is this a big deal? Is this not a big deal? And yeah. you, again, you just said it, like you don't think that it is. And I, it's just another spot for you to play. It feels like yeah. that. Yeah, which um, it's a big role, obviously, filling Paris' shoes because he's first, future first-round pick. But uh, I think if I keep building on what I'm doing in the spring and then going into the summer and going into fall camp, I think uh, I'll be fine. Um, and I think Buckeye Nation will be uh, happy with me. How, how did the bison get named last year? They just called that. That I, I don't honestly. That's a good question for go try. I I have no idea how they got called. Okay, so that was never like a nickname that you had. You didn't no. didn't ask for your no. input. No, because Donnie had it uh, two years ago too. So. Okay, we just didn't know, yeah. so we assigned it to you. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, when you talk about you know replacing Paris, and I remember mm-hmm. last year talking to Thayer a good amount. I said, well, who's who's the guy that we need to keep an eye on? And he would bring you up, and you were still hurt then. Yep. What? Why is it that these guys do you think have so much confidence in you? I know that that's patting yourself on the back a little bit, but they both talked really glowingly about what you can do. Yeah, um, I think it's because I, I just I just watch film and I keep watching film and trying to trying to get better. Um, I watch a lot of NFL tape. I watch a lot of college tape. Um, I I'm just so in love with this game right here. I don't think, and everybody's doubting be me being left tackle or everything like that. But I think me working hard like that and showing people how I work is is just gonna answer the question itself. I don't you think that people are doubting you to do that? I think we're just curious about how it works. Like I, we've I been talking it, about you for a long yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I take it I take it as as both. I a take challenge, it as yeah. a challenge and I take it as they're doubting me to play here um, and play left tackle here at Ohio State. Yeah. Well there's a lot to be said for having that chip on your shoulder even yeah. if whether it's real or not. Yeah. I mean, and I can only speak for us, us I guess. We, yeah. Anyway, we don't have to get into that. We, as much film as you're talking about watching, NFL, your own film, Ohio yeah. State film, when you turn that off, what will you watch then? <laughs> I'm a big movie guy. I like movies. Okay. I, um, I'm a big Disney guy, too. I like, uh, I like right. Pixar. I like anything Disney. Um, and uh, I like comedy movies. I like to laugh, too. That's that's the, that's the biggest thing for me. But I... I can't get away from my film. My iPad's <laughs> usually right next to me. Oh, my, uh, my iPad's in my locker right now. So just watching that and um, seeing the NFL players do it and seeing Paris do it, watching Paris last year, just seeing what he does, it's uh, I think it's more confidence for me to play that position. What is, what's your favorite Pixar movie? Favorite Pixar movie? I'd have to go to the Toy Story Trilogy. Okay. Or 
Well, four. It's yeah, four. What, four. What is the word for a four? I, I don't know. It's uh, not a quadrilogy. Quadrant. No, that's what I was. I was thinking quad, and I was like, no, that's not right. That's yeah, not right. But, that's not gonna work. Okay. Um, yeah. And that the first Toy Story came out before you were even born. Yeah. You, yeah, but I, I love Toy Story. I think that's that's my favorite Pixar movie. Um, Soul's a really good one too. I like Soul a mm-hmm. lot. Um, Bring a tear to your eye. Yeah. Well, they all do. Pixar yes. cheats. Yes. That's like their design. They, the emotions to get into your emotions. Yeah. Do you? So, all right. You're not. A, you're not ashamed to say that Pixar can bring a tear to your eye. That's good. No. That's yeah. that's a man who's confident yeah. in himself. Uh, who's your favorite Toy Story character? Mm. God, that's a tough one. <laughs> um, I would probably be a Buzz Lightyear guy. Buzz Lightyear. Okay. Yeah, big Buzz Lightyear guy. Yeah. Um, and then probably Woody after that. Oh, you take the big guns. That's yeah. Cool. Um, for an offensive lineman who gets, are you allowed to just eat whatever you want, or do you have to be on a select, eat doing it right plan? I'd say doing it right. Um, obviously, you can't eat whatever you want because that affects your play out on the field. Um, and doing that and putting the healthy stuff in your body um, can transform your body into what you're feeling now and oh i'm not tired this play um oh i feel better eating that so just like mixing and matching those um and like trying different things um just to see what works for you i guess if you got to cheat what would you eat (sighs) i'm a mcdonald's guy mcdonald's any mcdonald's okay Um, i heard trent williams say it on the podcast once in a while he'll get mcdonald's and uh that's that's my guy too i like trent williams (laughs) a lot uh but yeah i heard mcdonald's is uh probably the I'm a go-to. Okay, well, I mean, McDonald's is always listening, so that's a good yeah, name yeah, NIL McDonald's, plug right yeah. there. Uh, have you done much of that yet, or is that still coming? In? No, that's uh, I, I don't look I don't look for it, and if it comes to me, I'll I'll uh, I'll do it. Okay. But, Would you want another one other other than McDonald's? Um, no, not really. Whatever I like, I said whatever comes to me, McDonald's would be a cool one. All right. When I'll let you out of here. When you get to put the pads back on, when you get to have a scrimmage, I know that that's got to be an offensive lineman's favorite part of spring. Yeah, yeah, uh, just going live against, um, like I said in the interview over there, elite pass rushers like JT and Jack, um, even Kenyatta, um, Amari, Caden, um, those guys, just going against them. And then if I get beat, um, just tell them, hey, what I, what I do on yeah. that one, what I give you on that one, and learning from that. And um, I just like to say, uh, be ready for the scrimmage. <laughs> All be right. ready for the scrimmage. You have a question for me or are we good? Um, I have a question for you. What's your favorite menu, or what's your favorite menu item on Roosters at Roosters? Oh, what what a great question! Uh, lately, so I've been going with because uh, you can get any wings anytime. Yeah, All right. That's that's a no brainer. But the sandwiches are really good. Yes, I do like the sandwiches. And right now they've got the the Lenten menu. I hope they keep it. Mm-hmm. But the the fr- you know, fried fish sandwich. The, the fish then, is always good. And then put a little pepper jack cheese on there. Yeah. Now we're now we're cooking. Yes. Yeah. We're cooking. And then get some you know wedges on the side and some spicy ranch. We're yes. in business. You like? I see. I'm not a big spice guy. I, I just like traditional ranch. Yeah. Well, everybody says like Justin Zwick every Monday. This is the best ranch in the world. Homemade ranch. We did yes. confirm that. Yep. So you can't yeah. go wrong with that. No. But I was just a little spice in there. Okay. And you're good to go. Yeah. But. You know, sometimes if you get too much, you pay the price for that later. That's a different conversation yeah. that we don't have to have on the podcast. But that—that that is the best question we've got on a Freaky Friday by far. You can tell that Josh Fryer has been waiting for this opportunity for a long time. <laughs> and maybe we'll just hand the podcast over to him at some just point. hand it to me. That's right. You can take over. All right. For, for Josh, I'm Austin. Let's go back to the show. All right. Thanks uh, again to Josh Fryer to joining us for a quick interview, getting ready for the scrimmage on Saturday, where, as Bill said at the top, you can't help. You're going to be watching the quarterbacks. It's one of the mm. most important position battles in the entire country. Oh, do they have an opening there? They they're, do, they're trying yeah. trying to find a starter? So on Wednesday, uh, their old quarterback was in here. He might be the number one overall pick in the draft. His name was C.J. Stroud. He's gone. They have to replace oh, him. Yeah. He can't play He's not allowed right? to do it anymore. Oh, man. Yeah. That's he's, unfortunate. Because he's rich now. Oh. Well, he was rich before that. <laughs> oh. That's, <laughs> that's, all his that's actually a great point. His watches cost more than my house. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm really excited to watch these quarterbacks. Um, I don't know. Like, I don't, I don't have, like, expectations of what I'd like to see. I, I guess, um, you know, as a very, very amateur, I don't even call myself a quarterback <laughs> evaluator. I just like watching football. I think I have a, a general idea of like what's a good decision and what's a bad decision. Uh, so I'm curious to watch that kind of stuff. I'm actually, maybe more than anything, like 
I'm interested in watching how Ryan Day reacts to the decisions that these guys make. And he was talking about on Tuesday, like how he's watching where their eyes are. If, if that's where he would go mm -hmm. with the ball on that play, he designs the plays. He's a quarterback. He knows where it's supposed to go. And his reactions to individual plays, I think, could be telling. I don't think you're going to see these guys be able to be hit. They're not going to be able to certainly not. not be able yeah. to run. <laughs> uh, they're not going to be able to run. I can catch it. We've got hands. <laughs> you worried about us? No. <laughs> they're not they're not gonna be able to run they're not going to be able to be hit um it's really just going to be to me watching decision making how quick are you getting rid of the ball um are you, are you putting yourself in a position where you are taking a sack that was unnecessary because you're trying so hard to find the perfect pass i mean those are the things that you look for physically these guys are both going to make some mistakes they're both going to make some throws that are going to be like wow that that's special um but it's really all about as you said what ryan day a sees but also be what he allows and mm. is he going to be letting them take shots down the field is this going to be a lot of dink and dunk stuff is it uh, how do they how do they operate you know up and down the field but is, is it just going to go go red zone and then figure it out from there so um i want to see these guys lead the team on the field i, I don't want to see this okay kyle you're out now devin's in devin's out kyle's in i want to see drives and how they respond as a leader to their team and how they get guys in, in ready to for the next play that sort of stuff I bet you won't. Probably not. It'd be hmm. cool if we did. But I never get to see what I want. Yeah. <laughs> the, yeah. No nachos. nachos. <laughs> For, no shows. For the first one. No shows. And you'd have to go back a while, but like you are, <laughs> it was a reminder. This is practice number five. So they're going to be doing specific. This is going to be the red zone period. And they'll take like, you know, five straight shots from the five or five straight from the 10. Like I, you're not going to see some of that go through. I am uh, wondering how much um, Ryan Day will design stuff that could be out of the pocket or if they would let a play go a little bit. Maybe you get a slight tap, you'd still let Kyle McCord uh, roll out, try and find somebody down the field, how much they would try to bring that out or evaluate that with him. I, everyone believes that he can do it, but again, this is still early days of trying to get a firm evaluation and and reps at doing that. Uh, if that's going to be you know, a key part of what it takes for him to find that next level and be a Heisman Trophy finalist and and lead Ohio State, then you, you have to find ways to get him to do that before September. So um, whether that's design stuff, whether that's plays breaking down or blocking breaking down, I don't know. But I, I, I do. I thought on that first day of spring practice when we came out here that they were even doing a lot of individual drills that were designed to force Kyle to move. Yeah. And I don't. I will be watching on Saturday to see how much of that exists when they get to decide, here's what you're working on. I think they will manufacture some of that to, to the best of their ability. And I do, like, <clears throat> the stakes aren't the same, right? When you're doing third down, fourth down, there's not 100,000 people. If you miss a play, there's not going to be 10,000 people on Twitter telling you you suck. It's not, it's not the same thing. But um, they've been really good at throwing the ball in the red zone under Ryan Day. So I am interested to watch that when they do get into the red zone period. Do How do you feel get... about the way they run the ball in the red zone? Not great, Bob. Um, <laughs> but they throw it well down there. Uh, maybe they should throw it all the time. But um, I'm, when they get down there, I want to <laughs> see if uh, if Kyle and Devin have like the touch and anticipation and the ability to read the field in these confined spaces that CJ and Justin and Dwayne all had, which made them elite uh, red zone passers. What if they just schemed it up? Like, I don't know, sending KJ Hill or Chris Olave in motion into the backfield and then just – Flipping yeah. it back out for an easy touchdown. That does seem to work every time, doesn't it? That's not a complicated read, I don't think. No. It does um, score a lot of touchdowns. I'm looking forward to seeing the interior defensive line, uh, Hero Canoe. I'm, I, I just, he looks like a much bigger guy than anyone else that we've seen play defensive tackle at Ohio. I mean, obviously, Tyler Williams is a big, big kid, but uh, he's not six foot five and 315 pounds like mm -hmm. Hero Canoe is. And I don't know if he's ready to be a, a game wrecker in there, but he he physically looks significantly different than any other defensive lineman or defensive tackle we've seen at Ohio State in the last couple of years. I mean, we've seen the Teron Vincent types, the you know uh, Jerron Cages, the, those guys. They're they're big, they're big, they're big humans, but yeah. they're not like massive humans. You know, like Tommy Togi, yeah, I was like certainly a well put together right. large man but he was not six, he's like fox too yeah he was <laughs> and so i i think if you want to have a defensive line that does something a little different this year you need someone like hero Kanu to be a, 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 an impact player so I, I think that he's a mentally ready talking to him quite a bit on uh thursday at you know as the media session and he just seems like he's really eager to get out there and do some damage so i, I want to see how that plays out you know what i like about hero Kanu? um a couple of times we've been out here for interviews with defensive linemen 
and like guys will like stand behind us and like make funny faces to try to trip people up. Hirokunu just like sits there and listens intently as if he's like, I think he's trying figuring to learn, out yeah. to learn how to do interviews. I asked his him time. on Thursday, I said, are you just desperate to like get your chance at this? He said, no, these are just my friends and I want to support them. Oh, what a nice guy. Jolly. Yeah. That is. Um, I also feel like there's. Warm the cockles of my heart. <laughs> don't, don't you think there's also something to it that like he still barely played any football and he's yeah. like he is always looking to listen and learn about it. Like that's, that I was think my, he just likes Yeah, just like football. And he's I think he, yeah, he's, nice, he's got a, a joie de vivre about yeah. him that I really appreciate. That's how you say it, right? Yeah, it is. Joy yeah. of life. Joy of life. I know French. French Freaky Friday. You heard it here first. Berm actually speaks French. Oh, un petit peu. What was that word? Un petit peu. <laughs> a little bit. It's a gross, <laughs> vocal, gross language. <laughs> oui. <laughs> that was at the language of love. It's disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> Fromage. <It's, laughs> it stole that title from Latin, which, mm. you know, we it know what happened to, disgusting. We know what happened to Latin. Tell me. It's dead. Well, not in my heart. Mm. Okay. Um, anyone else that... Uh, you know, uh, CJ Hicks, I think uh, we, we'd be remiss if we didn't say, yeah. like, ha has the has the proverbial light come on for CJ mm. Hicks when he's playing linebacker, or does he just look exactly like you want a linebacker to look? I don't know. He was getting some extra work with James Laronitis after practice on Thursday. Also, like, I have to keep reminding myself that James Laronitis is a coach here now, because you look out there, like, what's that guy doing here? Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> they pay him to be here now. Yeah. He, it's, it's not just volunteering like Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> Bobby lives here. <laughs> yeah, this coming out, peeking out from the, his spot back there in the weight room where he lives. Um, all right, well, that's Freaky Friday. I don't, I don't think we need more, right? Au revoir. We are gonna come yeah. back in uh, on Saturday. We cannot wait to do so. We will have some Snappy Jays after that for you on a Saturday afternoon. Snappy uh, Jays. <laughs> I don't think that's French. Yeah, I tried. That wasn't even a good accent. Oh. <laughs> You've done better. <laughs> Try. Nah, no, you shouldn't. All right, I uh, hope you have a great Friday and a great weekend after that. I uh, appreciate you joining us uh, today and all week long on the podcast daily. Uh, you can hang out and get some more coverage of Ohio State spring practice at ohiostate.rivals.com. You can use code DTE30 and get a month for free. That's on us. The cost of on the house, as they say. That's Bill and Berm. I'm Austin. Thanks again. We'll talk to you later. Have a great weekend.